Attention Monster Market listeners, the express lane is now open. I repeat, the express lane is now open. Hey everyone, Zach here again, and today's monster is one of those great monsters that crosses all kinds of I don't know, genres, types, I don't know. Is it a ghost? Is it a demon or a devil? Is it a cryptid? Is it a hoax? Is it a crazy person? Is it a serial killer? Or is it a superhero? Or is it all of the above? So today we're heading to London, where up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, no, it's Spring-Heeled Jack. So this phantom, known as Spring-Heeled Jack, I'm just going to call him SHJ, uh, he sprang <laughs> He sprang his way into English folklore uh, during the Victorian era, with actual sightings documented around 1837. People began to see this dark cloaked figure who could easily leap over 10 foot walls. They would sort of just, some of the early accounts just saw him kind of creeping about and then springing straight into the air, uh, hence his his name. There's uh, different accounts of how this phantom looked. So, you know, he's always human shaped, um, but he sometimes he is described as having blue flame coming out of his mouth and glowing fiery eyes and claws. Um, other times he is actually described as wearing some sort of a helmet or some sort of uh, mechanical apparatus on on his suit. So I suppose for Victorian era, you can imagine it as sort of some kind of steampunky Boba Fett kind of thing, which is kind of cool. And then uh, other accounts actually uh, describe him as wearing a a bear's skin or being in the form of a bear. Um, but he's always got sort of this gentlemanly bearing to him. So in typical Victorian fashion, many accounts talk about how, how ladies who caught even a mere glimpse of SHJ were driven to such a fright that they went into fits and hysterics and never recovered, uh, whatever, whatever that means. Get your fans and your fainting couches. Um, but no, really, he, he, SHJ was something that a lot of people claimed to have seen. And remember, in a big bustling city like London, you know, how how quickly or how reliably do these accounts spread? And, you know, remember, there's no internet or, or you know, there's no means of rapid mass communication. But it was ubiquitous enough that in 1838, the mayor of London, Sir John Cohen, uh, got involved and addressed the sightings publicly. He had a pile of letters from around London describing encounters with SHJ. Some postulate that his his public address about the issue was facetious and kind of taking the piss regarding this new devilish apparition. Um, But privately, it was said that Cohen believed that SHJ existed, though he was unsure if it was a devil or a person performing, quote, wicked pranks. One of the main accounts, and, and one that is pretty typical, is in 1838, a woman by the name of Jane Alsop recounted a tale in which a police officer came to her door calling for her to bring a light because they had apprehended SJH in the alley. So Jane did this, but as she approached the officer, he threw off his cloak and revealed a frightful appearance, spitting blue and white flame with red balls of fire for eyes. He snatched her and began tearing off her gown with metal claws. Screaming for help, she managed to break free, but not before suffering gashes on her neck and arms. 
Her sister uh, heard her, came to her aid, and SHJ disappeared. So more accounts continued to flow, and, and there are many of these accounts and, and written accounts for easily the next decade. Other people began to write about SHJ, so much so that he sort of entered also into the realm of urban legend. Certain writers began to write about him in the popular Penny Dreadfuls at the time. And there were books written on SHJ or books or articles, you know, I don't know, uh, of, of the period, of the day. And they were not advertised as fiction. So whatever this apparition was, it was something that was taken at least semi, semi-seriously. You know, I mean, there's a lot of stories about different uh, serial ne'er-do-wells in London of the era. So you can see you can see where uh, people would take this seriously. But the thing that was so remarkable is obviously the the way that Jack looked and this fact that he could leap so high into the air and leap across buildings. Obviously that is where he got his name, Spring Heeled Jack. And whether his powers were given to him by the devil or by some mechanical means uh, was was up up for debate. A lot of stories and writings about SHJ then started actually to move into the world of fiction, and some even began to portray him not as this devil or demon or monster, but actually as a strange vigilante who had this frightening demonic appearance in order to scare criminals and to right the wrongs under the cover of night. Um, Does that sound like anybody else we know? Um, Yeah. I mean, spring Jack is definitely a precursor to Batman. And if you look at some of the art in some of the, the penny dreadfuls that depict him as this undercover vigilante, He even has sort of bat-like qualities and features, and he's always got this dark cloak and can leap. So it's very easy to draw draw that connection. Uh, That's about all I have to say about SHJ today. Um, If you want a deeper dive into this character, um, I really, I suggest Bob Gimlin's video on YouTube. Um, He does a lot of videos about cryptids and 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 the paranormal and things like that um but he does have about an hour long deep dive into spring heel jack that i i would recommend um and i would also just say that my first encounter with spring heel jack was in the late 80s when i collected well i still collect when i first got the monster in my pocket toys Um, which were little tiny miniature monsters, just one color, little rubber guys. And one of them was Spring-Heeled Jack. And so that's how I first encountered who that was. All right, well, that's all from me today. Tune in next time when uh, we'll keep talking monsters and creatures and folklore. And until then, come again. Bye. Hey everyone, David Universe here, producer and audio engineer for Ben and Zach's Monster Market. On behalf of the team, thanks for listening. Music for this episode was created by Twinstrumental. If you'd like to see sketches of the creatures discussed on this episode, as well as other mystical goodness, please visit us at monstermarketpod.com, as well as Instagram and Facebook at monstermarketpod. For creature recommendations, or just to say hello, please email us at monstermarketpodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget, subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Until next time, beware, because they be monsters out there.